Well, I've shown you the blackberries. Let me show you the rest of my container garden. We'll start here with the um, tomatoes. Uh, you watched me time the other day, but you didn't really get a good look at, at the tomato plants and what they look like. These two are um, red snapper. Uh, it's a house tools variety. I've grown them, uh, this is my third year, I think, to grow them. Really like them. It's a, it's a, it's not a big, huge beefsteak, pound tomato or anything, anything but it, it gets pretty doggone big. Bigger than a celebrity, bigger than a lot of the tomatoes I grow. It starts out maybe not quite as tasty as you would like it, and then um, uh, as, as, you know, after the first few tomatoes come off, it just gets better and better. So really good tomato. I really like it. Wouldn't grow it again if I didn't like it. And uh, look, how, look how thick those stems are. They probably... Oh, down at the bottom, that's dime-sized stems. We're in the first week of April. Uh, second, I guess we're going in the second week of April. Uh, my neighbor raised these plants for me. I didn't raise any plants this year. And uh, when I came down with COVID, he just offered to, to raise all my plants. And I gave him the, the seeds I got from Hoss, and he had his own seeds. So I've got some of his, uh, the plants that he likes and planted. And I've got some that I got from Hoss that I have planted the last couple of years and really liked. And I'll show you some of the varieties that I really like from Hoss. Uh, these are uh, these are celebrities. He likes to grow celebrities, and uh, those are 18 inches tall, 18 to 20 inches tall, and really doing well in this earth box. I had a little scare this morning though. He texted me about seven o'clock and told me his weather station outside told him it was 35 degrees out here. And that scared the poo out of me. So I ran out here real quick in the cold. I was showing 38 degrees. I'm, I'm about, oh, probably 20 to th at least 20, if not 30 feet. I'm up here on the hill and he's down there, back, back there behind that red building. And he's, so he's down maybe 20 or 30 feet uh, lower in elevation than me. So we have a little bit different uh, mini climate going on here. But I came out here and sprayed all these down, and I did, it looked like to me there was a little bit of frost on these tomatoes. Uh, and uh, the old timers used to say, if you can wash it off before the sun hits it, you'll save them. So um, I washed them off. I'll show you some burn I got on something, but, uh, but these tomatoes look good, healthy. I didn't lose any. Again, celebrity. Uh, this is a tomato that the Texas A&M, he's a big believer in the A&M projects and, and their recommendations. And this is called Bobcat. Called Bobcat. Bobcat tomato. I think it's supposed to be, uh, supposed to do well in the summer. And we'll see. It's, it's about, that one's over 12 inches tall. That one's about 12 inches tall. I need to come in here and take off some of these bottom uh, bottom leaves and that could have got that could be a little bit of frost burn right there maybe but uh, so that's the bobcat these are pink brandywine which is my favorite tomato as far as just eating it's an heirloom and they just are really really good and I tell you what if I hadn't have tied these tomatoes and peppers I think I'd have lost them uh, two three days ago we got a big old burst of wind. I think it's probably 50, 60 miles an hour. And I'm afraid, as tall as these tomato plants are, I'm afraid it would just snap them off or at least bent them so bad, bent that stem to where it was, uh, it would probably have killed it. But I told you I used nectarine uh, prunings, cuttings to, uh, to stake with. <laughs> I got a bloom right there, a nectarine bloom and a nectarine leaves. <laughs> now it'll dry up because it doesn't have any roots, but just thought I'd show you that. That's the uh, pink brandy wines. These are uh, two cherry type tomatoes, a sun sugar and a sun gold. This is the sun sugar. I already got uh, just a nice little cluster there. Nice little cluster there. Uh, the sun gold I planted before. Really like the sun gold. It's it's it gets bigger than a, a regular cherry tomato. They get they get uh, oh silver dollar size some of them a uh, half dollar silver dollar but I really like cherry tomatoes I just come out here and I'll pick a, a bowl full or a, a pouch full and I'll put them I'll wash them put them in the refrigerator and just to put them in a bowl and 
when we're going to eat something, lunch or dinner, I'll just go in there and grab me uh, eight or ten or whatever and just eat them. Just, I, I, I always, <laughs> I really only need one plant because one plant is, is plenty for me. But uh, I've got two. We'll see which one I like better. Sun Sugar, Sun Gold. All right, let's go over here. I'll tell you what, let me just turn around and show you my beans. Now, I've got beans in the ground over there along with my corn. And uh, I'll show you that in maybe another video when I do the... I'm doing a container video right now, so we'll show you. I'll show you that later. And these are beans that I planted after... Um, after the ones in the ground and they are already bigger than the ones in the ground maybe because these containers heat up quicker uh i planted them maybe a week after and boy they caught up quick these are my homemade earth boxes uh they've got a they've got a, a you know a reservoir water reservoir in the bottom my wife used these on the front porch last year for um for some de decorative plants but this is where i saw this morning, I got some, got a little bit of frost burn on it and it's killed kill a few leaves, but I don't think it's gonna kill the plants. I've replanted, I had one like right here, I think it was, it didn't come up. So I came in here a few days ago and replanted, so it'll, it'll fill out a little bit better, but a lot of these leaves, a lot of these leaves got burnt this morning at 38 degrees. And that was just as calm as it could be. They were showing, they were saying it's gonna be 40 degrees. So I didn't think anything of it. They were showing it's going to be windy like it has been for the last month. And uh, so I didn't think anything about it until my neighbor uh, alarmed me this morning. But these, uh, these are green beans looking pretty good. These are uh, contender green beans. And uh, I, I, I typically don't plant green beans or haven't in a while because I've just, I just, it's, I can't grow green beans real good. I can grow the yard long green beans but I can't grow regular green beans. So we're gonna try these. And if these, after these make or don't make, you know, be my luck, they're not gonna make. Uh, Cause I, again, I just, I can't raise a decent green bean to lay, save my life. But uh, after they make, I'm going to pull these up and plant some, uh, plant my yard long beans in these, I think, I think. And, you know, I hate to successive plant bean to bean, but uh, it's just what I've got open at the time. So I'm probably going to plant yard long beans in these containers. Yard long beans love the heat. And if you buy any, uh, you've seen me plant them before and I really like them. I mean, they, they, they just grow like crazy, but boy, they climb. So just be ready for a good trellis and a tall trellis. Cause they'll, I think they'd grow 30 feet if you'd let them. Uh, but they, they taste a little bit different than a regular green bean, but not a whole lot. Let's look at the peppers. Now these are my, some of these are my favorite peppers. Some of them, again, my neighbor grew. These are um, red Marconi peppers. And that is my favorite pepper. It's, it's similar to a banana pepper. It's not hot, uh, but it's, it's meatier. The, 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 the walls of the pepper is thicker, so you get more in your bite and uh, more pepper to your bite. And I just, that's, that's my favorite pepper right there is the Marconi red. So that's the Marconi red pepper. Let me get over here where my shadow's not blocking you. And uh, some Marconi reds from Haas tools, the seeds came from Haas. These are um, gold, uh, gold rush, I think they're called. Gold rush banana peppers. They're looking nice. Gold rush, yeah, banana peppers. Uh, and those are from Haas. These are from Haas and I really, really liked these last year. But I can't eat a hot, that hot of a pepper. I just can't. So these are heatless habaneros. I think it's called roulette. And I, every time I, every time I bit into one, I, you know, I said, uh oh, because it's called roulette. <laughs> but I never had got a hot one last year. The plants grew prolifically. They grew three feet tall and just had habanero uh, the the heatless habanero peppers all over them so it's really good uh pepper with very little i don't i don't know that i tasted any heat so i i, I either say very little or none and uh, but just that but still had that habanero flavor that uh, kind of a citru citrusy taste and then um now these let's see i'm gonna get in your shadow again here he had he had a mix up these are either yellow bells 
or they're called a potapina. It's a jalapeno. So I'm uh, these are these are a grab bag. Not, not sure exactly what those are going to be, but I planted some. Same thing here. No, these are cayenne. Uh, this is I, I I asked him for some hot peppers because I you know want to make some sauce and stuff like that. So these two are cayenne, and those two are uh, Tabasco. The Tabasco doesn't look really good, but they're just so small. And again, the hotter the pepper, uh, they just, or, or let's say the hot peppers, just don't grow as fast. They don't germinate as, as fast, and they don't grow as fast. So I'm going to come in here in a few minutes with kind of a, a, a light dose of the 2020-20 and some water and just get a, just get a measuring cup and just maybe get uh, a cup or maybe a half a cup in each of those, each of these peppers. I did that with the tomatoes and the tomatoes just took off. Got just dark green. That's what you want to see. That stem, dark, dark green. Boy, when it does that, you know it's getting the fertilizer it needs. You know it's starting to starting to really take off. So, um, but these are the the again cayenne. And again, again, my neighbor raised them for me. Cayenne and Tabasco. And I'm so I'm sure I'm not going to be able to eat them, but I got a brother-in-law that just he'll eat them till he just sweats through his shirt. <laughs> All right, these hadn't come up yet. Just planted these uh, a couple of three days ago. I got one trying to poke out right there, and that is uh, right there. These are squash. I've got two zucchinis, two zucchinis, two zucchinis. Those are all uh, Haas brand. Oh, I'm trying to. Trying to think of the, the actual brand name of it from Haas. And these are a straight neck. The first three tubs, six uh, grow bags, are a straight neck squash that I grew last year. And they are, um, it's a gold prize, I believe they call it. And they I, it just, they don't have, they're just as smooth as they can be. Uh, they, they get, you know, they can get big, but if they're just tender. I was eating them raw out in the, I'm not even a squash eater much. And I was eating raw out in the garden. They were really, they were that good. I was snapping the, the, the head off, the neck off of it, and just kind of chomping on it. Just really good, really good squash. It's a gold prize squash, and I really recommend that. Hoss Tools, again, uh, six of these, and, and I probably only need one because, but this year I'm planning on pickling some squash. If anybody has pickled squash or pickled zucchini, let me know and if there's anything special to do with them i don't think there is i put i put a squash in my uh when i did my pickles last year which came out just great you need to watch that pickle video uh if you've never pickled before because it was my first time and they came out fantastic uh, using a mix that you buy uh called uh, mrs wages and it was just the pickles just came out fantastic we have eaten the dog out of them pickles and uh, we put up probably 50, 55 jars of pickles and probably don't have, uh, I know we don't have half of them left. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna try to pickle some okra. I'm gonna try to pickle some, um, some squash and some zucchini. And if you've pickled them and they need any special care, any, any, anything special other than what same thing you would do with a cucumber, let me know. Uh, Cause I've just never done it before. Now what I did do, is put a, a piece of squash, uh, a, you know, a slice of squash and a slice of the zucchini uh, in my pickles when I pickled them. And when I ate them, they were just fine. They taste like a pickle, but they just, they, they were crisp. They didn't need anything else. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm just gonna do them the same way I did the pickles. Uh, over here, I've got some burpless cucumbers. It's called a burpless supreme. And uh, I believe that's from Haas. And I planted two to a hole. I mean, you, in an earth box, you plant four squash in an earth box. You put the fertilizer strip on that side, plant your squash on one side. You can put a fertilizer strip in the middle and do two on one side, two on the other. But uh, this is the way I did it. And it was, this is the way they say do it. Uh, but I'll probably come in here after their, um, I was afraid they got burnt. Sprayed them off again this morning pretty good. But, uh, I don't think they're going to get burnt. But I love burpless cucumbers. They uh, about the only kind I'll eat. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of trouble with other cucumbers, but I've gotten so used to burpless, I just think, why bother with another one when you can eat, eat a burpless? These are cucumbers here. 
I've got six tubs, six earth boxes of cucumbers, and I've got a, the first three are Sumter, S-U-M-T-E-R. It makes a pickle that is short. It's just the right size for a quart jar. They don't get any taller in a quart jar uh, or the neck on a quart jar, so perfect for, for pickling. Uh, just slice them in three or four slides. They're big. They're fat now. They get big. They get something. You can. They can get pretty big, pretty, uh, pretty fat. Two inches in diameter or thereabouts. But uh, uh, but they're they're short. You don't have to cut the ends of them off of them. Now you want to cut the blossom end off, but you don't have to cut them cut them down to get them in your jars. They uh, they're just the right size. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I've got three of those. That's the Sumter. And then I've got three uh, from Haas that are, um, I just, again, just planted these the other day. Um, oh, shoot. I done forgot the name of that cucumber. I'll have to put it on the screen right now. But it's a cucumber that Haas sells. And I've got just some of them just starting to, to peek out right there. Just starting to peek out. That one there is trying to peek out. I'm going to plant some wildflowers, I think, in this garden. Probably where that lone tub is right there. Uh, plant some wildflowers across there, some pollinators um, to bring the bees in, and uh, and then I'm that's that's pretty much my the, the container garden. I'm I'm real pleased with it. Looks good. Had the scare this morning of the frost, but it didn't get anything as far as I can tell. So, all right. So that's my container garden so far. Just starting out this year, and it looks good. All right, we're gone.